The other way I think you've been incredibly gutsy is on Israel. Yeah. And it's interesting, we're talking about the police. Somehow, the Israeli war that we just had got conflated on social media among the woke, who are people who actually fell asleep during history class. Um, <laughs> With, with our racial problems here in America, and I, you know, I just want to say, kids, uh, what's going on in Israel has nothing to do with George Floyd. It's not about racism. Less than, I don't think they would know this, less than half of Israelis are white. <laughs> you know, the reason why they're bombing buildings is not because they're racists, it's because there are rocket launchers in those buildings. Um, and I think you're the only Democrat who has been forthrightly standing with the country that seems to be more aligned with our liberal values? You know, for me, the progressive position is the coexistence of a Jewish state and a Palestinian state, not the exclusion, existence of one to the exclusion of other. Right. For me, there's a difference between... <laughs> there's a difference between promoting peace and inciting hatred and most of the words and ideas and memes that I've seen amplified on Twitter are aimed at inciting hatred for Israel rather than promoting peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And my concern is that the hysterical demonization of Israel has set off a global wave of anti-Semitic violence and vitriol. And, you know, hate is never going to bring us peace. It's only going to bring more violence. And that's my basic concern. Right. I mean, you... And then, to your point, you know, there's a wonderful writer, Maddie Friedman, who warns against the danger of Americanizing the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, we as Americans think we're the center of the universe and we tend to apply an American perspective where it doesn't belong. This is not a black and white conflict. As no. you said, 20% of the Israeli population consists of Israeli Arabs, Israeli Palestinians, and a majority of the Israeli Jewish population consists of Mizrahi Jews from North Africa and the Middle East, Sephardic Jews who are Spanish Jews, right. there are Ethiopian Jews, this is not a black right. and white conflict. This no. is a brown versus brown conflict. This only, is a conflict. only about 44% yeah. of the Israelis look like your dentist. And so I feel like we have to be... <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, but we have, to, we have to be careful not to reduce everything to an overarching narrative. You know, every right. country, every conflict has its own history, its own particularity, its own complexity. And none of that should be ignored in favor of an overarching ideology that purports to explain everything. But, but, but I, I, what bothered me so much about it, among other things, was that it seems like the progressives, or the people who think they're progressive, have, have aligned themselves with a place, Gaza, I mean, the war was between Israel and Gaza, that is so against liberal values. I mean, Gaza is a theocratic state. It's, they have no political democracy. They haven't had elections since 2006. They're never going to give up power. They run it like a mafia. It's a kind of a thugocracy. I mean, women are treated worse than in porn. Um, I, 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 Do you want me to make the progressive case for Hamas? Is that the... No, no, I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm not looking. <laughs> okay. No, you, I think we're on the same side. No, we are. I know this one. I'm, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are or why, how progressives, I mean, they have honor killings there. I mean, how progressives could have gotten into their head, and this is not just in the recent history, but in the last 15, 20 years we've seen this, with these kind of values that are not liberal values? Look, it's, it's inexplicable to me. Israel is held to a double standard. You know, I, t I ask people, right. ask yourself a simple question. If you and your neighbors were the target of 4,000 rockets, what would you expect your government to do? Would you expect your government to do nothing? Now, having said that, once hostilities break out, it is critical for a third party like the United States to immediately intervene and negotiate a ceasefire and end the bloodshed. Because as you said previously, there are no winners in war, right? Everyone loses amid the wretchedness of war. But I do feel like Israel is held to a double standard. And there is an undercurrent of anti-Semitism in the disproportionate scrutiny of Israel. Well, Congressman, I really appreciate your guts. And uh, I hope you come back and visit us soon. Absolutely. As you ascend up the ladder in politics, which I know you will. All right.